If you're building client websites and you want to restrict access to what they can do inside the dashboard, but you still want to give them control of things like uploading their logos, contact details, changing opening times and so on, and link these through to the custom files you're going to create as part of a custom Elementor Pro theme, this video is going to be for you. I'm going to show you how you can take Advanced Custom Fields Pro and the options facility inside that plugin and how we can use that to create custom options pages to specify exactly what your users can change on the website. If this interests you, join me as I take you through how we can do all of that right now. My name is Paul C. This is WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon to become part of the WP crew. Be notified every time new content is uploaded. Okay, so we're going to hop over now into the dashboard of WordPress and take a look at how we can set all this up and get moving with our new options pages. So the first thing we want to do is take a look at these plugins. As you can see, we've got Advanced Custom Fields Pro. Now you need to have the Pro version installed to have access to the options. If you have the free version, this is one of those things that you don't have. The Classic Editor, you can ignore that, I just prefer that to Gutenberg. Dynamic Conditions, if you're using options pages with Elementor, Dynamic Conditions just means that we can tap into that. And if we want to have things that could be shown if there's content, but also be taken out if there's no content, then that makes it just incredibly easy. And the benefit, completely free. And then we've got Elementor and Elementor Pro. As always, we need the Pro version because we want to tap into the dynamic content and also the theming functions that we have. So that's all of the plugins we have installed. The next thing we have to do is go through and activate the ability to be able to use options pages. Out of the box, we don't have that functionality. So how are we going to do that? There's a couple of ways you could do it. You could use plugins to activate this if you want to, but in all honesty, it's very, very simple to do it yourself. All we need to do is come over into the appearance section and come down into the theme editor. Now, word of warning, if you are not used to working inside here, or you just don't want to do it here, you want to do it inside the file manager that's part of either an FTP client or as part of your hosting, you can do it that way as well. It doesn't really matter which way you do it, so only the end result. Just bear in mind, if you do it this way, you could potentially break your site if something goes wrong. Bear that in mind. So the next thing I want to draw your attention to before we put anything else in is I'm using the Hello theme because I like to have that completely blank template system so I can create all the different aspects using the Hello theme and using the template and options as Elemental Pro. But because we're making changes to the themes functions.php file, I've also gone ahead and installed the Hello Elemental child theme. I'll put a link in the description below where you can grab this from. Always recommend if you can make any changes whatsoever to any of the core files, especially the functions PHP file, always do it inside a child theme. Then if it's an update in the future, it's not going to break anything. Making sure that we've got the child theme selected. If you take a look at the top right hand side, you can see we've got Hello Elemental and Hello Elemental Child. You may see additional ones inside here. So just make sure that you've got the right theme selected and choosing the right theme functions file. So with the child theme selected, we're going to come down and choose the theme functions. I'm going to say leave that, doesn't matter. And there's our basic functions file. Now, this is going to be different to the normal Hello functions file because there's a lot more in there and we're basically utilizing what's in there and adding on to it inside our custom functions PHP file. So what I'm going to do is come down underneath what we've got in there already, and I'm going to paste in this little block of code. Like I say, I'll put this in the description below so you can grab a link to this so you can copy and paste this in, making sure that everything is exactly as it needs to be with no mistakes. So what are we doing? We're basically setting up a new function as part of ACF which is the ACF options page. So it's just telling us to set that function up and then add it in. Once we've done that, we're going to click update file and providing everything is exactly as it should be. Once we refresh this page, and we will need to refresh it because we're working inside a window, nothing on the left hand side is going to be updated. So once I refresh this, providing everything is in place, we now have the new options section. Now, if we come over to the options and we click to go into there, you'll see there's nothing actually here at the moment. And the reason being, we need to set up some custom fields and associate it with this new options section. So let's do that next. If we open up the custom fields options, we have no custom field group set up yet. So what we're going to do, we're going to click to add a new one. In there, we're just going to call this site options. And then we're going to come down to the location. Now, this at the moment says the post type is equal to post. What we need to do is change that. So this is, first of all, the trigger. We're going to come down and we're going to say that we want 
options page. And you can see now it says options page is equal to options because when you have one option section on here, that's perfectly fine. So that now means that anything we create inside this particular meta field group is going to be associated with our options panel. So let's take a look at doing that. So we're going to create this really, really simple. Just going to cover, put a couple of options in just to sort of demonstrate how this all works. You can get as creative as you want to, especially when it comes to working with creating your own custom templates and so on as part of Elementor Pro. So the fundamentals that I'll show you in here, they're going to carry over so you can get as creative as you want. So first things first, let's just call this site logo. We're going to say the field name, the site logo as well. And we're going to change this now to be a file or an image. It's entirely up to you because both are going to do fundamentally the same thing. So let's just say we're going to set that to be image. If we want to, we can then go through and choose what's the return format, image array. Well, we're only dealing with one image, so we don't need that. The image URL or the image ID. The logical one is going to be the image URL because we only have one image. We just want to return that URL value. Preview size is just for the dashboard of WordPress when you're creating this. It's just going to be the size that you'll preview it at. Next up, you've got the library. Do you want to up upload this to the library so it's globally available to anybody inside the media library that's part of WordPress? Or do you want to limit it to upload it just to the post? For simplicity, we'll say we're going to upload it to the library. You can, if you want to, then go through and restrict things like the minimum and the maximum sizes, allowed file types. And I would recommend that you set the allowed file types for things like JPEGs, PNGs, GIF files, and so on. Then you restrict access to uploading malicious file types. Okay, so that's the first field put in. Next one we're going to put in is just going to be something simple like we'll call this Facebook. Come down, we're going to change that text to URL. We'll just close that one down and we'll do the same thing again. Now we'll add another field and we're going to call this Twitter link. Again, I'm going to change that to be a URL field. So we've created a couple of different types of meta fields. We've created the link to the location where this is going to work. We don't need to worry about things like these settings on the bottom because none of those are going to be used. We're not going to deal with things like permalinks and content editors because we don't have any relevance to that in the options panel. Let's hit publish. Once we've done that, now if we come back over to the options and open that up, you'll see we now have three different options, the site logo, the Facebook link, and the Twitter link. So that's how we set the ACF side things up. Next up, we need to go in and start referencing these and using them in various different parts of the site. So let's move on and take a look at doing that now. Now, before we do anything with these options, let's just add some entries in. So the first thing we want to do is add a logo. So we'll just select that from there and we'll drop in a basic link. So we're just going to use the normal sort of Facebook link itself and the same for Twitter. And we'll just save that now. So we've committed those changes to our site. Okay, so now that's done, let's go into the templating section of Elementor, come down to the theme builder, and let's start off with our header. So we're going to create our first header. We'll add that in, and we're just going to call this default header. Create our template, and from there we can now start building out any kind of header that we want. Now for this, I'm just going to use a pre-designed one, so we're going to come down, we'll insert this particular one. doesn't really matter too much, I just want to show you how we use it, as opposed to worrying about these things. Okay, so let's just change this at the top. Now, first of all, let me just select this. This is edit image. This is not the normal logo option you'd have as part of Elementor Pro. And there's, there's a distinction, there's a reason why. You're limited in what you can do with that. That will automatically pull in the theme-based uh, image that you're going to use, which isn't what we can do in this because we're bypassing that and we're creating our own options page. So just bear that in mind. Sometimes you have to use a slightly different method to get the same end result. So what we're going to do, we're going to change this. So we're going to get rid of that image. We're going to bin that off. We're going to click now on the dynamic option. So we're going to click on there. We're going to scroll down to the bottom until we get to ACF image field. Click on there, then click on the little wrench icon so we can fine tune and choose exactly what image field we want to reference. So the key, we're going to come down. You can see it says site logo, but also says site options and then options site logo. So we can see straight away that this is part of an option setup and not a normal ACF field. So we'll choose that. We could put a fallback image if we wanted to, but for this example, I'm not going to worry about that. Then we can go through and we can choose whatever configurations we want, so the image size, the alignment, and all those kinds of things. What we do want to set up, though, is making sure that the site URL is the right link back, so it takes us back to the home page. Now, because we've pulled in a template, that's perfectly fine, and it's doing exactly that. If it wasn't, all you need to do is click on the little sort of database icon on the left-hand side. Let's just get rid of this. Click on the database, and what we're going to do is we're going to say site URL. 
And there we go. So that would be what you need to do. So that's the logo setup. So that's very, very easy. But what it's doing is it's referencing our options page. So if we log in, change the options, upload a different logo, it's all going to then change throughout the entire site. So let's just publish this and we'll add a condition in and we'll say this is relevant to the entire site. So we'll save and close that and we'll take a look at testing that out. I've opened up the home page and as you can see, our logo is now at the top links back to the home page if we want to as well. So all of that is set up nice and tidy. So let's come back over into this and let's make some more additions. Let's just come in and say we want to add in some of those social media icons and we want to link those through to what we've created, but also set it up in such a way that if nothing is uploaded or nothing is added, for example, to Twitter, then the icon won't show with no link. Because obviously we don't want that to be the case. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over to the right hand side. We're going to get rid of this subscribe option. Just delete that out from there. I'm going to come back over into our widgets on the left hand side. Now, like I say, we can't use the social sharing icons and I'll show you why. If we just pull that up and we say we're going to use the social icons and drop that into the right hand side, you see, we automatically have these social icons added in which means that we have to specify exactly what's going to be listed there with no option to hide them if they're empty. Now we can, if we want to come in and we can change and we can create dynamic links, which is okay. But like I say, there's some inherent problems with that. Now, obviously if you were in a position where you were forcing people to put all these links in, then you could take advantage of this. We're not going to do that. So let's just get rid of this, close that down. Instead, we're just going to use the icon option. So we're going to drag and drop this icon to the top right hand side. We'll change the icon library and we'll come in and start off with Facebook. So we'll say we want this particular Facebook and we'll insert that. So now we've got our icon in there, which we can style and do whatever we want. So we'll set the alignment to be right hand side. Now what we're going to do is for the link, we're going to click dynamic tags. We're going to scroll down and we're going to say ACF URL field. Now you can see what's happening here is depending upon the type of object that we insert into the page, the ACF section at the bottom will change and update dynamically according to what information can be associated with this particular widget. In this example, we can set a URL field and we can pull it from ACF. Whereas the previous example, it was an image field. So let's choose that. Now, because we've got two to choose from, click the wrench icon, choose the key, and you can see we now have options for Facebook link and for Twitter link. So let's just choose the Facebook link. Again, fallback, if we wanted to set something up in there, we could do, but we have no need because we're going to apply some dynamic conditions to this in a moment anyway. So there's the first part done. Next thing we're going to do is click on the link options and specify this is going to open in a new window because we want to keep the users on our site. And if they want to take a look at our Facebook or Twitter, it opens a new tab for them. So that's that side of things done. So what we can do now is we can fine tune and style this. Let's just make it a little smaller. So let's just set that to something like about 24. That'll look pretty good. And with that selected, we're going to simply hop over to the advanced tab. And because you've got dynamic conditions installed, we now have a new entry. So we open up the dynamic conditions option. What we can do is we can choose the condition to be met and how we want to check against it. So you can see we've got show and hide. So there's two condition options in there to show it when a condition is met or to hide it when a condition is met. It's up to you which way you want to work. It doesn't really matter. Both do the same thing. It's the condition is the more important part. So what we're going to say is hide when condition is met. Then we're going to click to open up the conditions and we're going to say is empty. So this is just basically saying that if there's nothing inserted into that field, which returns an empty value, just hide it. That's all it is, really simple. Now we've done that, we're gonna click and we're gonna just make a duplicate of that. So all we need to do is simply come up, click on it and click duplicate. Now the problem you can see is this now puts one above the other. So that's not really what we want. So let's just undo that a second, let's just delete that. So what we need to do is set this up so CSS is controlling how this is going to be positioned. So let's select it. Under the advanced section, we're going to come down and we're going to just choose positioning. From there, you can see we've got options for width and position. If we open up the width, we can choose inline auto. Now you'll see nothing really happens other than the blue box around it, the border around it, just kind of shrinks down to just encompass the icon. Now when we duplicate this, you'll see one sits next to the other because we're specifying that this is an inline style, which means that anything to the side of it will be basically ignored, which means we can line these up next to each other nice and simply. So again, let's just delete that first one just because I want to make some changes. This now I don't want to duplicate it every time. Coming to advanced, what we're going to do is we're going to add five pixels of padding all the way around it just to give us a little bit of breathing space. Now we'll duplicate it. We've got a bit of breathing space around there. 
Come back to our icon library and this time we're going to choose Twitter. Choose the icon and insert that. And now all we need to do is change the link. So we need to update that link, change that from Facebook to Twitter. And that's it. That's now updated that. So let's just update our template. Come back over to our site and refresh that. And we now have our two icons. If we click on the first one, it'll take us over to Facebook. If we click on the second one, it'll take us over to Twitter. So pretty cool. So that's very, very easy. Let me just take, give you one more example now just to show you how we can just add in text and things. So let's just say, for example, you wanted to give the opportunity to create a footer and have a bio in there. Well, we can do just that. I've gone back over into our field groups and opened up our site options. Let's add another field in. And this time we're just going to call this bio. I'm going to change this from text. I'm going to set this to text area. Now we can, if you want to set this to text area, or we could use a WYSIWYG editor if we wanted to as well. So if we scroll down, we've got the option to choose a WYSIWYG editor. There we go. So if you wanted people to style that content, you could do that. So it gives them the option to have more of a visual editor area. However, for this example, we're just going to keep this really simple and just set a text area. You can set it to required if you wanted to, to make sure that someone has to put some data in this. So your client knows they've got to put some data in to have that entry filled out on the website. Up to you how you'd want to do that. So with that in place, we're just going to simply update this. Come back over into our options section and you can see we've now got our fourth entry for bio. Let's drop in a little bit of text. So there we've got something in there and we'll click on update. So the next thing we're going to do is come in and just choose a template for our footer. So we're going to come back into the theme builder, come into the footer section and we're going to create a new footer. We'll call this default footer and we'll click on create template. Now from there, we're just going to choose any kind of predefined layer. It doesn't really matter too much. So we'll choose this one. We'll insert that in. And this gives us the ability now to pull in data. So you can see we've got an about section. So what we're going to do is we're going to change that from about and we're going to put our bio information in there instead of the static text that we currently have. So let's just select it. Over on the left hand side of the widget, we're going to choose the dynamic tags option. Scroll down to the bottom, choose ACF field. Then click on the wrench icon and come down and we're going to choose options bio. And again, you can see this is filtered out to show us only the kind of data we can pull in. So we say options bio. And once we've done that, we'll hit publish. And you can see that's pulled in the data for us. So we can click publish on there, add a condition and say we want to see the entire site. Hit save and close. Come back over to our test page and refresh that. And once we've done that, we scroll down to the bottom now you'll see that we've got that bio text is inserted into there for us, all done dynamically. So if we come back into this section, for example, and come back out now and go back into our, our section for our options, let's just duplicate this and just set it so we've got a second paragraph underneath. So we now have some additional content in there. We'll update that, come back onto our page and refresh. And you can see we now have extra content inserted in there. So it's very easy to use these option pages to pull in to data to any way you want throughout your template structure. And this is the fundamentals of what you can do with this kind of option setup with ACF and linking it through to the templating structure inside Elementor Pro. Now, if you found this useful and you want to sort of take this to the next level, to another step, in the next video, which I'll put a link in the description once it's released, which hopefully should be next week, I'm going to be taking you through the whole process of creating a custom user dashboard. So when your client logs in, they will automatically be redirected to their own specific dashboard, keeps them completely out of the WordPress dashboard. And from there, they can do things like control their options, their user profile, add new posts. And if you were using this with custom fields and using this with custom post types, we can also allow them to edit, delete, and control all those kinds of things there as well. So this is gonna give you a great way of keeping your user out of your normal WordPress dashboard and restrict the amount of things they can get access to. So this is something that should be coming in the next week or so. So if you're interested in that, again, make sure you hit that subscribe button to be notified as soon as that's released. Well, all the links are in the description below. If you've got any comments, questions, or feedback on anything covered in this video, drop those in the comments. As always, my name's been Paul C. This has been WP Tuts, and until next time, Take care.